Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about C-sharp and too many features. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you feel that C-sharp is getting too many features? I think that it might and I'm worried that it might become confusing to some people when there's so many features in the language. And the short answer is, I do think so, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. Let me explain. So, this subscriber is touching on a very good question. And it's something that is near and dear to my heart. And that is the question of, what is a good programming language? Is it the programming language that runs the fastest? Is it the programming language that has the most features? Is it the programming language that is the simplest or easiest to adopt? Which is it? And I will argue to you that this, the answer to this question is the programming language that allows you to do exactly what you need to do regardless of what that is. And that is a problem. It is such a big problem and it is the conundrum for every single language out there. Are we going to support all the people that want to do different things? Are we going to give them their use case? Or are we going to say, no, we only support these things because these things fit the vast majority of people's use cases. Now, you have a few examples where this, the, this sort of the considerations that goes into a language actually, I think is, it's showcased in a very nice way. And in a language such as, I don't know, say Python or Golang or something like that, where the language tries to go for minimum syntax and minimum features and so forth. I'm not saying that that's always the case, but where you, the surface area of the language is fairly small, you have the people who want to adopt it because it is a simple language. On the flip side of things, on the other side of the extreme, if you will, you have something like Scala. Now Scala goes for maximum empowerment and has probably more language features than any language that at least I know of. Now what's interesting about those these two different languages is that the popularity of something like Go and Python or whichever is vastly higher than that of Scala uh, by, it, by quite a lot. And I think that's showcasing something that's very interesting and that is that the amount of features in a language is not the thing that determines its popularity. And I will argue to you that, as I said, the goal isn't to have as many features as possible. It is about making sure that the people who are using your language has a way of expressing the thing that they want. Now, that brings a bit of an interesting perspective, I think. And that is that the only way for you to know that is to decide who your focus group is going to be. And that brings us to the point I'm making. A programming language is a product. Who are you going to sell that product to? Even if it's a free language, that's what it is. It's a product. And Scala, as an example, has no clear focus group. Like, who are they favoring? Uh, unless it's the academics out there, perhaps. Go has a focus group, a very clear piece, uh, sort of thing that they're, they want to use the, that language for. And if you look at C-sharp, C-sharp has a, also a very clear, at least from my perspective, focus group, but the focus group for them is quite large. But the reason why I think that c -sharp can get away with having more and more features and just trying to accommodate more and more stuff is because c -sharp, c sharp has something that some something that scala doesn't and that is control of the market or at the very least a very large portion of the market and that is ultimately the most important thing for any language it is the reason why java is still a thing and it's still being used for quite a lot of stuff. It's the reason why JavaScript is here to stay until someone decides to migrate all of our standards and browsers and all of that good stuff over to something else. 
you see, guys, a programming language is just a way for us ex to, for us to express that we want to do something. And the platform we want to build that and build for, well, if there's no other language for it, then that's the thing we're going to have to use. If you look at iOS for an ex as an example, I mean, I don't think anybody's going to argue that Objective-C could have been nicer. That's why we have Swift, but it doesn't matter because you have to deal with Objective-C until, well, at the very least, until Swift completely um, uh, takes over until that such a point and it's the same thing with c-sharp it doesn't really matter c-sharp could be the an even worse language than it and then you could imagine it could be really really shitty as people like to say about javascript and it doesn't matter it does not matter that it is a bad uh, language because it is the only game in town or at the very least it is so widely adopted that if you want to do certain things or do work in certain companies, you just have to deal with it. And that's the thing that Scala, as an example, doesn't have. So what I want you to take away from this is that I absolutely believe that C Sharp has gotten too many features, but that's only because, as I've stated before, I'm not in the focus group for some of these features because they are not arbitrarily adding things into the language. That doesn't make any sense. There are people who are asking for new features and as a language supporter or a language developer, you always have that problem where, all right, my, I have some users of my language who wants to do this and that, and if I'm going to make them happy, I need to add that in. But at the same time, I'm going to add more complexity to, to my language and it's going to grow. And ideally, you want to have these things in balance. You don't want more features than you need to do the thing you want. But at the same time, you need to market your product. You need to sell it. You need to make people want to use it. And they won't use it if they, they can't do the thing that they want to do. But you should also remember that the wi more widely adopted your, your product is or your language is, the more likely you are to be able to just accommodate more and more people because it doesn't really matter if a language is good or bad if it controls the marketplace. Because at the end of the day, everybody has, if you want to build something for a specific platform and there's only a handful of choices or maybe even one choice, then you have no options. It doesn't really matter if you like the language or not. Have a great day.